Welcome to video 4 of the trigonometry video series. This time we're finding angles using trigonometry ratios. To find an angle, the steps are very similar to finding sides. It's just that we have one slight change in how we enter things into our calculator. So should be pretty familiar with these steps. We'll label the sides hypotenuse opposite and adjacent first. We'll then decide whether it's a sine, cos or tan question depending on the sides that are involved in the question. We'll then write out, out our trig equation in a very similar way. Then we'll use our calculator. Now I'll show you the special variation on the, on the calculator steps for finding an angle. And that is that we press shift as part of the trig ratio entry. So instead of cos, we'll, so we'll press shift cos each time. Then we'll also round off to the nearest degrees, minutes and seconds. I'll show you how to do that using your degrees, minutes and seconds button. So that's finding an angle. Let's have a look at an example. We're after the f to, well, after finding the size of theta, the size of the missing angle there at the bottom of the triangle, and uh, we want to find the size of that angle to the nearest degree. There are the steps. Let's label our sides. We have the hypotenuse over there, the longest side. The opposite side to the theta is the 9 there, so we're going to put an O there for opposite, and the adjacent is the other one we haven't used yet. Now, let's decide sine, cos, or tan here. Can you see that um, the numbers we've been given are in the opposite and the adjacent position? So we want a ratio that works well with the opposite and the adjacent, and I think that might be the tan ratio that's got an opposite and an adjacent in it. So we're going to base the question on the tangent ratio. Okay, here we go. Now, once at this step, but once we got to this step, we've chosen the tangent ratio. We're going to fill in the question, fill in our um, our tangent ratio with the numbers from this particular question. So we don't have any idea of what theta is at this stage. So we'll just say tan theta for that left-hand side. We do know the opposite though. That's nine, and the adjacent, which is twelve. Now at this point, we will type into our calculator the following. We will press shift tan. It's almost like we're working backwards to find the angle here. So let's press shift tan. Then we're going to type in 9 over 12. Then we're going to press equals to lock that in. And then we're going to press the degrees, minutes and seconds button to turn it into uh, that format for our answer. So when we get that, we get this reading from our calculator. When we press shift tan, 9 over 12 equals, and then the degrees, minutes and seconds button, we get 36 degrees, 52 minutes, and 11.63 seconds. That's how we would read that. 36 degrees, 52 minutes, and 11.63 seconds. Now we need to round this off to the nearest degree. So when you round off, you check the next section over, which will be in this case the minutes section. We've got to see whether it's past halfway. Now the important thing to remember here is that the degrees, uh, the minutes and seconds, well the minutes and seconds sections are out of 60. So the halfway point, if you think about it, is 30. So 30 or more would be indicating a rounding up situation. So 52 out of 60, I think that's past halfway because 30 out of 60 would be half past halfway. So because that uh, second section there is past halfway, that indicates we need to add 1 to our degrees because 52 is 30 or more. So where it's usually uh, 5 or more raise the score, in this case it's 30 or more raise the score. Uh, for rounding up purposes. So we're going to write down 37 degrees uh, and indi indicate to the marker that we've rounded that off to the nearest degree. bit tricky there, but uh, okay, we want to round it off in degrees. We have to check the minutes to see if they're past halfway or not to round to the nearest degree there. Okay, let's see another example. We're finding the size of theta again. This time we have another couple of uh, numbers provided for us. Let's label the sides. Should be getting good at this by now. Uh, the hypotenuse is the longest side. The side that's opposite the angle we're working with is over on the right hand side there this time. And the 3.6 is in the adjacent side. Okay, let's decide whether we're going to use a sine, cos or tan here. Now this triangle has numbers on the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Which of our ratios works well with adjacent and hypotenuse? Can you spot it? 
Yes, I think it's the cause. Well chosen. So it's the cosine ratio we'll use for this particular question. So we'll write that up the top. We'll fill in all our numbers that we've got. We don't know we don't know the theta yet, so we'll just leave that as cos theta. Uh, in the A, the adjacent position, we have 3.6, so we'll put that on top. In the hypotenuse position, we have a 7.8, so we'll put that there. Then we'll do our fancy shift cos pressing here. We'll press shift cos, then enter 3.6 over 7.8, then we'll press equals to lock it in, then we'll round it off using the degrees, minutes and seconds button, and you should get, if you're doing it right into your calculator, 62 degrees, 30 minutes and 48.87 seconds. Now notice the question here asks for us to round off to the nearest minute. Okay, so we're going to round off after the minutes there, so we have to check that next section, the second section. Once again, that's out of 60. Can you see that 48.87 is uh, a pretty solid section out of 60? It's past halfway, so that would indicate we're rounding the minutes section, that 30. We're going to round that up by 1 because 48.87 is 30 or more bit trickier so that because the 48 is past halfway that indicates that we'd round off uh, to the nearest minute by adding one to the minutes section so our final answer there 62 degrees 31 minutes so once again um, the steps here are very similar to the steps we use for finding sides right down to where we start using our calculator here where the important thing is to find an angle we need to press shift sine cos or tan and then use the degrees minutes and seconds button to help us with our rounding off either to the nearest degree or the nearest minute or something like that and remember once these are in degrees minutes and seconds these last two sections are out of 60 so the pass mark or the, the mark that tells you that you should round up is 30 or more Okay, this one is uh, once again asking us to round off to the nearest minute. And uh, let's see our steps. Let's label hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Hope you're good at that by now. Let's decide whether it's sine, cos, or tan. We have an opposite and a hypotenuse situation here. So which one works well with opposite and hypotenuse? It's the sine ratio. Okay, so that's the one we're basing the question on. Sine theta, opposite position is our 4.8. Our hypotenuse has a 10.7 on it. Okay, can you guess the important thing when we're putting this into our calculator when we're finding an angle? We must press shift sign. Shift sign, 4.8 over 10.7 press equals to lock it in then the degrees minutes and seconds button we should get this sort of reading here now we're rounding off this to the nearest minute so we'll chop it after the th the 39 there we'll check the seconds section to see if that's uh, more than halfway now 13.6 out of 60 30 out of 60 would be halfway so I don't think we're doing much rounding up here so we're going to keep that the same yeah we're going to keep that minute section as 39 minutes because the section after it isn't isn't past halfway so that's because 13.6 is not 30 or more okay a bit tricky that rounding but uh, but uh, anyway we'll get the hang of it okay so finding an angle just to recap the steps are very similar to finding a side we uh, label the sides, uh, we decide sine, cos or tan depending on the angles, we're, uh, the sides we're using. Uh, step three, we'll write the trig statement out now. Once we start putting it into our calculator though, we've got to press shift sine, cos or tan. Then uh, make sure the degrees, minutes and seconds button gets used uh, so that it helps us to decide the rounding off there. So that helps, I hope that helps a lot. The main difference between finding a side using trigonometry ratios and finding an angle using trigonometry ratios is pressing, remembering to press that shift button. Thanks for listening. See you next time.